So this is part four of the Yamaha TTR 125 series. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give the piston another try. I'll try to get the rings out. Uh, the oil ring came out pretty much right away. It's pretty easy. But the rest of the rings are pretty stubborn. It's a pretty small gap. I think it, it actually moved. It recessed deeper into the piston. I'm thinking maybe if I tap gently all around, I can break it free. Oh, look at that. This one came out and just kept tapping on it. So I'll keep doing that, see what happens. I got it. At least a second compression ring. It's almost all the way out. Okay, the uh, second ring is free. I'll actually try to gently remove it. If you've ever done this before, you know how fragile these things, things are. You have to be super careful. Here it is. I'll clean it up a little bit. Maybe there's a little green guy. Dip it in WD-40. So it'll be less abrasive. I'll remove the oil rings as well. Like holding my breath so they don't crack. So, almost there. So far, so good. I'll keep tapping on it. Hopefully, it comes out. Made this gap a little bit wider and it looks okay. It looks like this side is coming out. Lee tap.
got it. Scored it very slightly at the edge. So hopefully I can mend that. I didn't do more damage than good. I'm going to clean the passages and the little oil channels um, and keep working on it. I cleaned up the little oil passages with a little cheapo carb pick and uh, I also cleaned the passages right here. It looks really good. I have uh, 12 hundred grit tin paper. I'm going to um, try to get rid of that little layer of rust on the piston rings on top and the bottom. Just, uh, I'll take it like this. Just the other side. Feels pretty good. I think I will leave it like that. All right, so I'm going to work on the cylinder a little bit. Maybe I can bring it back to life. Um, got this little cylinder home from Harbor Freight just now. I stuck it in there to see if it fits and it barely fits. So I'm gonna put some WD-40 on it. A lot better it it's taking that level of rust that was on top but you can see well although it feels smoother than it looks but you can still see like some sort of pitting So I've been at it for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes uh, using sandpaper and cylinder hone. You know, I made it much better than it was before. It's still pitted, but I think at this point I will leave it as is and we'll see how it runs. I mean, if it smokes, you know, we'll not with the cause. So I found a manual for TTR-125 online. And it has a ring gap, cylinder size, and bore size measurements here. I'll do my best to try to measure at least what I can. I'll try to measure the top and the bottom with this. See, maybe I'm in the ballpark of... of the size so I got 53.7 but you know it's not super accurate measurement of 53.6 it's I mean that that looks good so far to me like I said it's it's not the best 
the most accurate way to measure it. All right, so it says piston size should be, I'm not gonna read this number, but you can see between here to here. So between 53,000, some change, almost 54,000. So you got 53.9. Well, the piston, it looked good, you know, when I pulled it out. So I'm not worried about the piston. It just, you know, had a little bit of scoring, but for the most part, it looked pretty good. Well, that fits. That fits really tight. And that's the lower limit. So it, it's in there. But it takes some force to get it. Also, this is uh, pretty flat. And the cylinder is kind of rounded, so it's kind of hard to stick it in there. But I think we're in the ballpark of where we want to go. All right, let's try this one right here. Basically, put the ring in there, and then I'll put the piston and kind of make sure it's sitting kind of flat at an even level. And that barely fits in there. All right. Wow, that fits in there really loosely. Some of you probably hate me for reusing these piston rings, but it's a test, you know? It's for fun. I'm going to start working on this head. to make sure it seals really good in the intake.
that's pretty good. I made this tool by cutting a bolt and welding it to another bolt. It's not exactly straight, but the way it works is that I can thread this side into um, this light hammer and this side threads inside one of those shafts. coming out slowly. Got it out. It's kind of tough. Try to keep them separate. So we got a cam, cam shaft. Let's put it in a little baggie. So I'm contaminated in the dirt. Apologize if this angle is not very good for you. They're kind of stuck together. Got the exhaust valve out. So we got the valves out. Cleaned them up a little bit. You can see the pitting right here. Sorry, the lighting is not very good. And um, there's a big chunk actually right here. Hopefully I can uh, lap them and make them seat well in the head that it doesn't leak. We'll see what we can do. Let's do uh, the exhaust one. I wanted to do it off the camera, 
so all the dust doesn't fly on the, on the parts. And here's the exhaust. The exhaust appears to be better. Don't really see any I don't know, this carbon carbon buildup pitting. The intake is a little bit messed up. And this is the head. I cleaned it off a little bit. You can see I scratched it here. I think I'm gonna have to resurface it. Just a little bit because I went a little bit too crazy with the wire wheel. The head itself doesn't look bad at all. Alright, let's get to it. Get some valve grinding compound. The, the valve springs, they, they look so tiny. Yeah, I don't have a right tool for it. Let's see if I can get a piece of hose right here. Slide it in there. Cut it up. Get a drill. Check it out. It's a little bit better, but you can still see the pitting. Kind of bad. I'll keep working on it to see what comes out of it. It's even a little bit better. It's still, still needs a little bit of work.
I'll give it one more try, maybe two, and then I'll call it good. It's not perfect, but I am going with it. It looks like the little strip where it seals the most is it's mostly without any faults except a few little pits here and there. But uh, I'll go with it. I'll test it. I just don't want to overdo it. Let's do exhaust now. Exhaust came out pretty good. This is what the head looks like. Put a little bit of motor oil and that'll stand. Hopefully I don't have to take it off again. So this is the intake, and the intake is the larger one. Almost. This is just really small valves, valve springs, and valves. Alright, so I got the valves put in and actually already tested it, but I'm doing it again just for you because it's kind of hard to do this all at the same time. I don't have a good air compressor. I'm using my vacuum that's pretty powerful. Blow air in the intake. You can see there's some bubbles coming out from right here just a little bit of leaking and I'm okay with it because the vacuum is really strong so if there's you know just a little bit of bubbles coming out it's fine so it means it's sealing pretty good now let's do the exhaust You can see the exhaust is solid. There's pretty much no bubbles. Assembly time.
right, it's done. Except to adjust the valves. Oops. Let's put a little retainer plate. step for me is to resurface the head and uh, I found this piece of plywood in the shed it seems to be pretty straight so I'm going to put on this 1200 good sandpaper on it I don't know if I did anything to it. I think I will leave it as is. Let's have a look at that card. Well, it looks like it's a, hopefully, a real Mikuni carb. Who knows? Comes with the spider nest special. Yeah, definitely need to soak it up. The smell is pretty strong. It has two little jets in here too. Let's check them out. Need to write it down. We need two different sizes. So if I'm going to take them out, which one goes where? so hard to turn it feels like they put red loctite in it <laughs> with much Trouble, I got it out. I mean, it's all chewed up and stripped, but yeah, it looks like it's Loctite. 
well, I got another one to replace it. It's a pretty common carburetor screw. It's pretty good. It still has, you know, it's not really hard. It's flexible. I'll just up down this WD-40. You can see both or of the screws that have blue Loctite in it. That's why it was so hard to take them out. I don't know why. Does it really need Loctite? But I guess the designers of this motorcycle know better than I do. I don't know if I can take the needle seat out. No. Okay, I'll leave it in there. So I'm going to soak it up. So I got all the stuff that I want to soak in here. I'm going to put some simple green and boiling water in there because that's what I read on the internet on some random forum. I don't have carb cleaner. That's why I'm doing this. I'm using what I have at home. let it soak for a while so the car had been sitting for 24 hours in that uh, solution and honestly it didn't do anything um, scraped a little bit of the the bowl with the screwdriver to clean it up but other than that it's pretty much the same thing all right so I am going to soak the carb in pine saw for 24 hours. All right, so this carb has been sitting in here for more than 24 hours now. Uh, I wash it in regular water. You can see this like a chemical reaction in uh, aluminum. It's kind of turned brown. When you swipe it with the finger, it kind of goes away. Loctite swelled up a little bit in here. Hopefully you cleared up all the passages in, in the carb. Don't blow some air through it. This is the carb bowl. It's a lot better. It's still filthy. Also went outside and blasted some water through all these little passages and it seems to be flowing through all of them without a problem. So I think the carb should be okay. It's good enough.
So the last two pieces I have is slide, spring, and the cap. I'm missing a little part that goes on top to stop it. Okay, for now, I'm just gonna use this sort of system. So I uh, found a more elegant solution for the cap for the carburetor. I found this weird looking washer, my parts bin. You know, I just slide it over this, put it inside of here, and on the inside I can thread it. And this little nut is actually from a bicycle um, tube, it's from the, the valve stem. And once I tighten everything up, I found this piece right here that will slide over the the cable housing and you know I'll just put it on and hopefully there's not going to be a lot of uh, vacuum going inside the carb but at least it's solid oops yeah so basically the carb looks like this almost looks stuck thank you for watching uh, this episode I hope you enjoyed it give my give my video a thumbs up um and let me know if you like my videos i mean what motivates me the most if people actually say in the comment section if they like the video you know and just say anything you know it it's for me it's more important than a subscriber actually because i know there are people watching and they actually enjoy the videos so yeah i appreciate you watching um part five is coming soon thank you